where did Halloween actually stem from? Does it matter? Is it just okay for my kids to get dressed up and play pretend? Is it okay just to have candy? Haunted houses, the scary movies, all the stuff. Does this look like it represents God in any way? If you're a Christian, you get to decide, okay, I'm gonna continue that tradition or I'm going to break it. So the other day, Chrissy and I were watching, uh, I think it was a football game, maybe it was a show, I don't know, maybe it was Suits. We're suits. binge watching Suits right now. And there was an ad that came on talking about all the places our data goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was talking about... Uh, Credit cards, social security numbers, all the things that you like quickly do online to like buy something or... And it's so easy yeah. now with a phone, right? I mean, just Apple Pay and, and it, it automatically your face and, fills your information in. Right. And so our data is everywhere. Even like at the DMV that uses the oldest computer in the world, right? Like they, they have your data. Do you feel safe? The answer is no, right? None of us feel safe. But they were asking that question. I was like, I told Chrissy, I was like, I've never thought about that before. Mm -hmm. I've never thought about who has my data and what are they doing with it? And that made me think about this as a Christian. Have you ever asked, why do I celebrate Halloween? Because a lot of times we just, we just celebrate what's the cultural norm. Yeah. We grow up celebrating Christmas. We grow up celebrating Easter. We all grew up celebrating Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. and Halloween. Fourth of July, all the things. All the things, all the holidays, because it's just St. Patrick's Day, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't question it. We don't ask about it. We just do it. Mm -hmm. But where did Halloween actually stem from? Does it, does it matter? Is it just okay for my kids to get dressed up and play yeah. pretend? Is it okay just to have candy? To be honest, like we had, a, we had a neighbor next door growing up, now that I think about it, and we all celebrated Halloween. It wasn't a big deal. But we had a neighbor next door. She actually had a, she, um, she had a different dad than the rest of them. And her dad wouldn't let her celebrate Halloween. We thought that's weird. Weirdo. Yeah. It was like super weird. We we're like, why would he even do that? But now I know. Now I know. So we're going to dive into that today because just like you said, I remember, so my grandpa used to have these big tractors. And so we would put a, uh, a trailer on the back of them. When I say we, he did it. I was a child uh, and he would load it up with hay and we would go down the street, trick-or-treating, knocking on doors, you know, getting the bucket pails from McDonald's. Do you remember those bucket pails? Yes. Yeah, everybody had them, right? Uh, that ages us, us millennials, here we are. Uh, just going door-to-door -door and then having parties and getting dressed up and just, you know, painting the pumpkins and doing it all. And I'm sure, same thing, everybody online, you you have that that yeah. history, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you painted the pumpkins, you got dressed up, you Our went to the film, parties. All the things. Exactly, the haunted houses, the scary movies, all the stuff. But the question is, if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, this doesn't apply to you. Should we be doing that? Mm -hmm. Have we ever asked ourselves that question? Mm -hmm. And why does it matter? So there are some legitimate reasons why it matters. But one of the things that we need to understand is that we all have been influenced one way or another by somebody. Yes. You know, like even right now, I'm coaching Gwen and Vivi's basketball team. Uh -huh. Not because I love spending time with 10 year old girls. Or you're, that you're even good at basketball. I don't even play basketball. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a football fan. But they influenced me to coach them because mm -hmm. I love them. Yeah. We're always influenced by somebody that we love. And so we're influenced by the Bible. We're influenced by God. We're influenced by our small group at church. Uh, but we're also influenced by our culture. Yeah. And especially here in Southern California, the culture is celebrate Halloween to mm -hmm. the extreme. Yep. Like our neighbors... Our neighborhood Ooh. looks like a haunted house. It really does. And they are, they claim to be a Christian. So they, these are the people that we're talking about. I put up these pictures at our church and just sharing a little bit about that and just ask, does this look like it represents God in any way? And right. you can even look at these pictures and ask yourself that same thing. Because the clear answer is no. No. It's like, not at all. Matter of fact, those are the things that Jesus was casting out of people. Right. Oh, yeah. And instead... What we're doing now for Halloween is we are glorifying it. And so some of you might wonder, okay, but it, again, it's just innocent fun. My kids are getting dressed up. Nobody's worshiping the devil, right? <laughs> Nobody, nobody's doing any satanic rituals. Right. But here's the thing. We don't understand how demonic Halloween is. So it stems back from the Celts. They called it Sayween. That's where it actually stemmed from. What happens back then is they believe this time of year, uh, you know, October 31st, right until November the beginning 1st. of November. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the thinnest veil between the physical and the spiritual. Mm -hmm. And they believed that the demonic, that ghosts, uh, that the dead would rise and they would haunt them there uh, in the Celts where they lived. Yeah. Uh, and so to protect themselves, they would dress up 
like demons, like ghosts, like the dead, like the dead, because if they, if they can confuse the demons, then the demons won't haunt them. Right. They wouldn't mess with them. They wouldn't mess with them. So if they looked like, um, walked around, like, um, kind of blended in with them. That's called mumming. And that's where we get our costumes for Halloween today. Mm Mm-hmm. Stems back from a demonic ritual, a pagan ritual, that we are going to dress like the dead and dress like demons so they will not haunt us. Yeah. But we don't know that because we just like, oh, it's just a Power it's Ranger fun. costume. It's fun. Right. Power you, Ranger costume. That's what I used to wear. It really dates you. It fit really tight, too. <laughs> 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 then, another thing that they would do is, it was the poor in the city, the poor in the town, as they are dressed up, they would go door to door to knock on these doors and tell people, we will pray for your home, again, to a pagan god, mm-hmm. uh, that they will protect your home from the, the dead, the demons, and the ghosts. Upon praying, though, we're asking for something in return, mm-hmm. a type of food. If they did not want the prayer or they did not give them food, they would do something to their home. Hence... Trick or treat. Right. Give me a treat or I will do a trick, which is another word for curse. And these are the things that Christians are, we're not aware of. Mm -hmm. Now you're aware of it and now you have to decide what am I going to do with this. I want to say this really quickly because I feel like even when I said that about curse, you're like, those aren't real. Those don't happen because we have a lot of lukewarm Christians that really don't understand the depths uh, and the spirituality that this belief system that we believe as a, as a Christian really is. And so I want you to look back on your life and think about something that somebody said to you when you were younger, something that your parents spoke over you, something that a teacher said about you. You've shared that before. And look at your life and your belief systems about yourself. I guarantee you it is connected back to those things. And those things are called word curses. So when I say a curse, right, when I'm talking about these things, those things are actually real. Our words have value. Our words have weight. God created with his words, and we were created in his image. And so now we have the same ability to use our words for life or death. And so I just want to touch on the this meaning of, like, curse and that it is actually real, and it it, it affects us in our life. And so when these things happen, it is real. And to hit on that, because obviously the, the opposite of a curse is a blessing. Right. And so when we are, when we got married, when you got married, uh, you are uh, making a covenant with one another and saying a vow, right? right? Mm-hmm. I'm saying a vow of, of how I'm going to be committed to you. A curse is a demonic vow. Mm. It's something that I'm now speaking over you that's bringing death. And just it's like you said, it's destruction. That there's life and death and the power of the tongue where our words come from. Yeah. You want to hit on curses more no but i just i just want to tell the people that might not believe even in that curse part of it as real as it was then it is today and so well i think even to reflect on that an example like were you called a loser when you were a kid you're not smart enough you'll never be smart enough right right? uh you'll you'll never um land the girl you'll Mm -hmm. you'll never be a good father You'll never fill in the blank. You're always going to be a failure. You're always going to be this. You're always going to be that. That's what I'm talking about. These are word curses. And do those come up in your mind still? Are those actually driving you one way or another? Right. And so that's when you might think that, no, it's all fun and games and curses aren't real. Just to your point, you're probably actually living a life that is cursed if it's not been renounced and broken. Right. And now some of you might be like, this is a little deep for a marriage podcast, (laughs) but we are pastors and we love Jesus. Right. And so it's like, how can we always just talk to you guys about dating and sex and all these things in marriage, but we don't also talk about the depth of the spiritual realm, Mm -hmm. especially when we're inviting it into our homes on Halloween or we're taking our kids out there. Because again, the Bible talks about be fruitful and multiply. Where our seed, right? How are we actually growing that fruit? Is it going to be good fruit or bad fruit? Mm -hmm. Because you are a product of your parents, what they did, you you get to decide, okay, I'm going to continue that tradition mm-hmm. or I'm going to break it. And now the decision is for you as you're learning about Halloween and where it actually comes from is, okay, this is a, a holiday that is obviously pagan. It's demonic. I get to make the decision today that is going to be a seed for my children to see good fruit in the future. Yeah. 
because one of the things like our kids have already done, and maybe you want to share this story. Um, I mean, I guess I could, it happened with me, but I took Gwen and Vivi to school the other day. And my 10 year old told me, Hey, um, our, our teacher wants us to write a scary story. And I was trying to give the dude the benefit of the doubt because it's a Christian school. And I said, well, maybe it's a scary story you could write. Like if you go to Disneyland and you get lost from your parents and she, she said, dad, it's about Halloween. Like just straight up. I'm like, okay, thank you, honey. Um, she said, can you email him uh-huh. so I can do something different? Yep. Now that's my 10 year old. Yep. She didn't hide it. She didn't make me come up with a different idea. She already had the idea because of the seeds that we have been planting. We are seeing the fruit of that. Yeah. And so, and the same thing with Vivi. What about Vivi? Remember that game that she was playing with some of her friends? Right. <clears throat> yeah. Cause this, this isn't just this time of year. This right. is like fear. This is all the scary movies. We're very like aware of what our kids are watching. Cause here's the thing. Do you know that anxiety is through the roof in our children? How do you think that pouring evil and fear and all of this stuff. I'm not even talking about, let's like put aside, which it is directly correlated to it. I'm not saying it's not, but if you don't believe that that is that the fear and I'm talking about any scary movie is not related to the demonic. It is, but let's say it's not for a second, but now you're planting seeds of fear. You're planting seeds of um, like just them being scared all the time. You know, they're little, their imaginations are running wild as they should, right? So now these are the seeds that you're planting. Oh, it's fine. Watch whatever you want. Oh, oh, that's scary. Oh, that's silly. That's funny. You're planting seeds of fear. What do you think is going to sprout up? Mm -hmm. And so this is a all year long thing, right? We were at a party. We were at a birthday party, what, like two weeks ago? And they had a bounce house. And there's this game. It's called Mummy, Mummy, Come Alive. And my daughter, my seven-year-old daughter, I tell you what, if you know her, which you probably don't, she is feisty. She will tell you what you think, what she thinks. She will say it like it is. So if you want the truth, you ask her, and she's not going to sugarcoat it. You can't handle the truth. You want the truth? You can't handle <laughs> the truth. I can't handle the truth I can't handle with it from her, her sometimes. Yeah. And so she was being, like, very, like, um, like clingy to me, which she is sometimes, but she was at a party. She's very social and she was just acting weird. I was like, Hey babe, what's going on? Like, are you okay? And, um, she's like, mom, they're playing this game. Mommy, mommy come alive. I was like, okay. And she didn't want to participate. She didn't want to be in there with them. And then, you know, as she's telling me the daughter of another or the mother of another daughter was like right there. She's like, they're doing what? And she like booked it over there to like tell her daughter to knock it off. But it's like, these are the seeds that we're planting. And just to go off of what I was even saying before that story about planting the seeds of fear and all of this stuff, the scary, the um, scary, horror, horror, all of that stuff. My kids, they like, yes, they've had a bad dream or two, but they've never had these night terrors and these constant, like, they're not full of fear. They're not like scared to like go do something or like, you know what I'm saying? Because I hear this from other parents all the time. We have friends that have told us they have had to like wake their child up and they could, they're like stuck in this night terror. My kids have never had that before. None of them. And it's because I believe we are not planting seeds of fear. Yep. Well, even this time of year, you probably see it. If you're watching anything on YouTube, if you're watching any show, uh, there's constant commercials and ads that are demonic. Absolutely. And you might think like, well, they're not demonic, but the question is again, okay, do they look like heaven or do they look like hell? If they look like hell, they're demonic, (laughs) you know, like, let's just like, I mean, it's not overcomplicated. That's it. And so even last night, there was a movie, uh, a new movie coming out called smile. And it's, I mean, again, a horror movie and we're just, we're watching a football game and it comes on and we're like trying to get the remote to shut it off and everything. Uh, but that happens all the time. But our kids know once they see something like that Instantly. to turn, turn away. And we uh, usually, again, we shut it off or we mute it right away and they turn away, but it's protecting them. One of the things that we've seen that's happening in our nation, in our world is the innocence and the purity of children being stolen at such a young age. Mm-hmm. Guess who, th- whose fault that is. It's ours. Are us parents that are not mm-hmm. standing up for their innocence and protecting it and their purity. Yeah. And ours that are just letting, again, this isn't supposed to be a political conversation or anything, but. But it's not just sexual. It's not. I mean, the whole political thing is going sexual like that period. Like I'm talking about eyes, ears, heart, body. We are called to be pure yes. in everything that we do. 
And this is just a part of it. Well, it's like even thinking about the consumption of alcohol, which again, the Bible says you can drink, don't get drunk, right? Um, but alcohol is poison. It is. It is poison. And so like no marriage has ever gotten better by getting drunk. No one's like, oh my gosh, you guys were a mess like last year. What happened? Go party every weekend. You know what we started doing? We mm -hmm. just started getting wasted. Oh That's God, how our relationship was it. being ruined <laughs> by alcohol because it's a poison and there's not purity in it, right? right? And so that's what we're just saying, sharing that with like a level of, okay, this isn't alcohol. This isn't intoxication. This is a holiday that's based from a pagan ritual, a pagan holiday. Yeah. Hey, do you ever wonder what should I do for a date night this Friday? Because it feels like you're just in a rut doing the same thing over and over. Well, we put together 52 date night ideas for you, ranging from budget friendly to if you're a parent, how do I date when I don't have a babysitter to something fancy? You want to get dressed up and really treat yourself. So click the link below. It's a free PDF, 52 date ideas for you and your spouse. Get it right now. And so there might be some questions that you have. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to answer your questions because we're not live. Okay. So some of the questions you might be asking yourself, you may wonder if participating in Halloween with costumes and candy is really a spiritual issue. Listen, Halloween is more than candy. It is more than costumes. It is for those who practice witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, uh, I'll probably link this video in the bottom so you can go and watch it. Uh, but there is a pastor who used to be an ex-Satanist. His name is John Ramirez. Well, he is an ex-Satanist. Thank you. <laughs> he used to be a Satanist. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you for correcting me. He used to be an ex-Satanist. And uh, yeah, no, he is an ex-Satanist. Um, and, and now he's a pastor. So he was a Satanist, now he's a pastor. And, and he shares Halloween, what it's all about. He got married on Halloween. He, he was an ex-Satanist. He dedicated, or he was a Satanist. He I keep messing that up. Yeah. He dedicated his daughter on Halloween mm -hmm. to the devil. Uh, the things that they would do on Halloween. So as Christians, we should be praying, right? Praying for our family, praying for our children, praying for you know uh, the government, praying for our loved ones, pray, just praying, we, right? We want a relationship with God. Right. They pray to the devil. And I don't know if you know this, they fast all month long leading up to Halloween for demons to chase down Christians. What does that even look like? We what do you have, mean they fast? They don't eat. They don't they they give up something to seek more of the darkness, more demons. That's crazy. Isn't it? Yes. We have I mean uh, the way that he was sharing this is that we have more people um, and the demonic side that are fasting and praying, especially leading up to Halloween, than we do on the Christian side of fasting and praying leading up to Easter or Christmas. That's crazy. I Christ did not know that. Yeah, because Christmas and Easter just becomes another, again, a tradition to us, right? Like forgetting that. No, the reason for the season is the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Easter, it's not about bunnies. It's about the resurrected God. It's about the empty tomb. Yeah. Like, And so we should be fasting and, and praying and believing that our unbelieving family and friends and coworkers and whoever people at our gym are going to come to know the Lord that mm -hmm. time. That's what they're doing for Halloween. Wow. Not that people are going to come to know the Lord, but they will be destroyed by the devil. Wow. And he shared Christians are the biggest target because again, as Christians, we've chosen a side. Mm -hmm. We said, no, no, I'm not team devil, right? I'm team Jesus. So they're praying demons go after the Christians. So what they pray over, just so you know, when you think it's just fun and games, it's just candy, they are praying over your children's candy. Make them sick, give them tumors, give them cancer. That's what they are praying to the devil to fill uh, these things with demonic spirits for your children to consume. Wow. That is crazy. And think about it. When you go to someone's door, when, when else would we do this during the year? Going to a stranger's door and wanting to eat their food. Right. Never. You know? And here's the thing. A tactic of the enemy is not like, they're not going to look like that. They're not going to look as if, I mean, they might be dressed up, I guess. And so, but it's all a part of it. You're not going to know who they are. Right. They're smart. The enemy is smart. He wants to look good to you. He wants to be attractive and enticing to you. Oh my gosh, look how scary this house is. It's so fun. They're going to be nice. They're going to be sweet and kind, right? Yep. Just like I can't judge a believer, right? You've seen it all the time. Oh, our daughter, Kara. Remember she was, um, she was waitressing and she's got sleeves all over her arms. She's got a bunch of tattoos because they cover up scars from her past. Yeah, it's all redemptive. Like it's all about her tattoos are all about Jesus. And so she was waitressing one time and... They started, they tried to like 
minister to her and um, and evangelize to her. And she was like, oh, actually, I am a believer. And they're like, oh, really? Like, you don't look like it. It's like, what's that supposed to mean? And so for us to judge a believer right. by the way that they look, it's the same thing. We can't judge somebody and think that we know somebody based on yeah. what they look like. Well, the Bible says that the devil comes as an angel of light. That's true. Um, but when you speak about redemption, I think that's so good because it goes into the second question you might be asking. Well, can't we redeem Halloween? Can't we redeem Halloween? Because when you look at the origins of even Christmas and Easter, there's certain, there's, yeah, certain aspects that are... T- uh, tied to pagan holidays in that. But here's the thing. This is, again, let's use our brains. <laughs> when you look at Christmas, is it dark? Is there horror? Is there fear? Is there death? Right. Is there sexuality? It's, it's literally, t- I mean, it's the most cheerful time of the year. Yeah. The lights that are put up are cheerful. The trees that are put up, they're cheerful. The, you know, like, I mean, the, the manger scene, everything is so, like, cheerful. So something that was pagan that is redeemed that points to Jesus, and you can't see any paganism in it. But with Halloween, <laughs> it is nothing but darkness and, and death mm-hmm. and the devil. And same thing for Easter, because people are like, oh, well, well, Easter and the bunny and the egg and the fertile and all That's this. That's true. Yeah. That right, is true. Right. But. We celebrate Jesus. It's been redeemed. It's it's totally redeemed. Like even at our church, like I don't think we we've we've never had an Easter bunny in our church, have we? No. Okay. Um, so it's even like that. Like we celebrate the empty tomb. That's yeah. that's what the big thing is. Like what what do you celebrate? Let me ask you this. We're talking about we celebrate Jesus's birth and we celebrate Jesus's resurrection. What do you celebrate on Halloween? It's nothing with Jesus. Mm-hmm. It is pure demonic. And I'm not trying to beat you up. And I hope you hear that from uh, Chrissy and myself. But we didn't know this until we had a witch come and speak at our old church. She was an ex-witch. <laughs> we just let anybody speak at that church. <laughs> she was an ex-witch. Now yeah. she's a minister of the gospel. Yeah. Goes around sharing. And same thing. She would tell us the things that they would do on Halloween night. Yes. The sacrifices that they would do. Mm-hmm. The prayers that they would do. The spells that they would cast. Um, even John Ramirez. This is crazy. When uh, Satanists are crazy. He, he When they would hear sirens and he would go to scenes of whether it's a murder, whether it's a car accident, whatever literally collect body parts. That's trippy. Yeah. Collect the bones. Do like start, like gather these, these dead objects to do spells and even drink the blood. I know. Crazy, crazy. So anyways, uh, if you're thinking, can it be redeemed? The answer is no. Uh, (laughs) Leviticus 18, three says you must not do as they do in Egypt. So again, us as Christians, we're coming out of Egypt. We're coming out of a culture of death and we're coming into life it says where you used to live and you must not do as they do in the land of canaan where i'm bringing you do not follow their practices you must obey my laws and be careful to follow my decrees i am the lord your god so we're asking what are his decrees this is what ephesians 5 11 says have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness but rather expose them mm. boom exposed <laughs> <laughs> That's just what we're doing as uh-huh. a Christian married couple and raising kids that we want to have an amazing relationship with God and not be tempted one way or another. Because here's the thing too. Hold on. Before you say something, <laughs> you, you might think again, well, it's just, it, it's just fun. There's just a costume for all the men out there. Once you pass from that age of dressing up like a Ghostbuster and a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle and a chubby Power Ranger. <laughs> this sounds way too personal. <laughs> this is my history. Um, <laughs> And you start going to parties as an older teenager and in your early 20s, you are not caring about your costume you're wearing. You're looking for the chick with the skimpiest skirt (laughs) with her boobs hanging out, right? Mm -hmm. Like, can we just be real as married men here? That that was what your focus is. And now you're raising your children in the same way. It's all about the seeds we're planting. So I'm trying to teach my children with the seeds we're planting that we are not to have anything to do with deeds of darkness, but we expose them because I don't want my son being going after all these chicks that are not who God uh, uh, intended him to be with. Like right now we pray for our kids for their future spouse, Mm -hmm. not for the hoe at the Halloween party. Well, (laughs) well, you got saved. So you're a (laughs) chick. It's true. <laughs> it's true. How confusing for our kids that we would preach 
something all year long, and then it's like we throw it out the window Good point. for the um, the sake of fun. 